The Basilisk, a serpent king who can cause death with just one single look, a slithering snake whose very breath is poisonous, a mythical beastie who guarded the chamber of secrets. What if they weren't so mythical? I guess the enemies of the air had better beware. Hello and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions, the channel that loves a good mythical question as much as we love to talk about real life, because imagination is one of our life's biggest assets. I'm your host Rebecca Felge and today I'm asking, what if if the basilisk was real. Before we slither into this video, I want to ask you guys what animal scares you the most? Let me know in the comment section down below. Also, while you're down there, why don't you hit that thumbs up button and click on that notification bell so you're the first to hear a big answer. I have to say, day to day, I'm pretty scared of spiders, but if I saw a big old anaconda, I think I would lose it. So, for those of you that know me, especially from my own Harry Potter channel, you'll know that I love me a good mythical question, especially when it involves a fantastic beast, so I am so here for this. Basilisks. Many of you may have heard of the basilisk from Harry Potter, but long before JK Rowling wrote of the muggle-born killing snake, it existed in European folklore, and reports of it kind of vary. In Greek, basilisk translates as little king. An ancient legend has it that the reptile was hatched by a cockerel from the egg of a serpent or a toad. This little king was always a killer, but had a slightly more whimsical half-bird-like look about it, and it was pretty comically tiny, although it would still kill you. Somehow over time the basilisk became decidedly more long and snaky, kind of like a mystical cobra. Ok, so if the basilisk was real, first thing is first, we would have another killer animal on the loose. Regular snakes can kill a human with their venom, but basilisk venom is super potent, but also super powerful, but we'll get back to that in a moment. Perhaps more worrying than the basilisk's venom is its eyes. One look from the serpent can not just kill animals, but humans too. If we knew where basilisks lived, we would stay away for fear of coming eye to eye with one. Or actually, would humans hunt them, looking through phone cameras or mirrors? It's probably better to be petrified than dead, right? If a human indirectly looks at a basilisk, they won't die, but they will be knocked unconscious. In JK Rowling's Wizarding World, a person who has been petrified by a basilisk can be cured with a draught made of mandrake roots, somebody called Professor Sprout. The only problem is that anyone who hears the cry of a mandrake is also susceptible to an untimely death. What is it? With all these animals attacking us through our essential senses. While I would very much steer clear of basilisk territory, I am sure some humans would sneak and find them out in order to harvest their magical properties of their venom. Like we mentioned earlier, it is very potent. In the wrong hands, it can be used to make a deadly poison, a weapon of mass destruction. But in good hands, it can be harnessed to destroy dark magic. So if the basilisk was real, A would this mean that magic as a whole is real, and if so, B would the balance between dark and light magic be determined as to who controls the basilisk? Would us humans even know about them anyway? How would we go about finding them? Well, actually, for muggles and wizards alike, the answer is spiders. Spiders are very scared of basilisks because they have 360 degree vision, so there's no escaping one if it's near you. When they sense they're nearby, they turn and run in the opposite direction. We basically just need to follow the spiders. And if you don't like that option, hey, there's always a good old eye gouging for you. Some further bad news re the basilisk, but if they are real, they might very well be being used as a weapon. Not only could their venom be harnessed, but they themselves can be manipulated into becoming personal killing machines. In Harry Potter, wizards who spoke parcel tongue could talk to and often control snakes. The basilisk isn't just any snake, only the darkest of wizards related to Slytherin founder Salazar Slytherin could control the beast. Nonetheless, if such a wizard existed, they could set the basilisk on people for their own personal slippery gain, their own personal assassins. Let's focus on the more positive side of basilisks existing though. If the basilisk was real, then other magical creatures must exist too. We've already talked about the mandrake, which can cure petrification, but there is another magical creature that can produce an antidote to the venom of a basilisk, the phoenix. The only problem is, is that phoenix tears are the cure, and I don't know about you, but I've never met a sad phoenix. It wouldn't be too much of a stretch to think that nasty old humans would set up phoenix depression farms where they milked the magical birds for their tears by upsetting them all day. What a heartbreaking thought. Would there be such a thing as free range phoenix tears? Could the birds volunteer their services? But wait guys, there is a key weakness to the basilisk that isn't mentioned in the Harry Potter books. According to ancient European lore, a basilisk can't stand the odour of a weasel. No need for eye gouging of snakes or humans, get your weasel out! If the basilisk were real, perhaps we would all keep safe by having a pet weasel. I always knew that weasels were the answer. Before we wrap up this video, I just want to quickly point out that basilisks 
basilisks are real in some way, meet the common basilisk, a species of lizard native to southern and central America. These babies can run on water. Watch them. I'm not a religious gal, but this is a bit like the legend of Jesus. All hail the basilisk. So guys, that is what we think would be going down if our mate the basilisk was real. I'm a Slytherin, so hopefully he would spare me. What do you guys think you would do if there was a basilisk on the loose? Let me know in the comments section down below. Also, be sure to thumbs up this video if you like this kind of content. For now, I'm off to cast some spells and do my thing. I'm your host Rebecca Velgate, I'll catch you in the next video. But until then, stay curious, stay alert, watch out for running spiders and never ever stop questioning.